It's my pleasure to invite you to a um, great event on jazz and poetry sponsored by the Department of Modern Languages and Literature and by the Department of English and uh, Language and Literature. Uh, both chairs um, are sorry not to be present, so I will replace them. Uh, it's my pleasure. Um, we are going to listen to a lecture performance of a uh, great artist um, who will pay a tribute to the Beat Generation, uh, and not only that. Uh, I don't know if you, probably not all of you um, know that the person who introduced the Beat Generation in Italy, that is uh, the great intellectual translator, uh, Fernanda Pivano, used to live across the street in Via della Lungara number three. When uh, I was invited uh, once to one of her many parties that she gave with her friends, that was in the late 80s, and Alan Gisberg uh, was uh, very often at her place, uh, Gregory Corso too, but it seems that he wanted to sleep on a bench outside uh, the apartment because he did not like the bourgeois kind of apartments that Fernanda used to live in. Uh, anyway, uh, those people and those poems, those words will resonate so in a familiar environment tonight, thanks to the deep work that Elisabetta Antonini has done in the uh, recent years, including a, um, an album called The Beat Goes On. And uh, with Elisabetta, who is a well-known singer and composer from Rome, um, also she um, has a collaboration with almost all the jazz scene in Italy and not just that. Uh, and she's also a, a teacher. Currently, she teaches at the Conservatorio di Perugia. Uh, with Elisabetta, <coughs> uh, we'll um, have uh, Alexandro, Alessandro Guis, who is another talented piano player, uh, who um, um, is uh, one of the founding members of Iris Tango, an innovative uh, ensemble that uh, meshed up the tango moods with the jazz rhythms. Uh, then, uh, um, a nice surprise, uh, at a certain point, uh, someone will show up and will join the band, um, and he's at home because he's an American saxophone player, uh, well known uh, in the world for his participations, collaborations. Let me just tell you the people with whom he uh, worked with, and I'm just mentioning the ones who my students might be familiar with, having watched the Sanremo Festival recently as an, as an assignment, okay. Uh, let me just mention uh, uh, Tiziano Ferro, Loredana Bertè, Roberto Vecchioni, uh, then Mina Celentano, and many more. Whereas Alessandro collaborated with Gianni Morandi and Massimo Ranieri, Okay, you have the whole gamut of Italian popular music present here. And so it's a great pleasure to uh, pass the microphone to Elisabetta. And uh, uh, please, a warm welcome to all the musicians. Hello everybody, welcome, thanks for coming. It's a great honor for me to be here in this prestigious in university and I'm happy to, uh, to bring here a work that I recorded some years ago in a, in, with a quintet, uh, a trio, musicians, and then uh, a saxophone player, Francesco Berzatti. And um, it was a, a, a work on the beat generation. And uh, I will tell you something about uh, this work, uh, how, what, what inspired me, and um, uh, which 
which are the themes and uh, ideas that made me compose the music uh, on this. It's not easy tonight because we are a duo. I thank uh, Alessandro Guis for, for participating in this uh, experience and adventure. And um, who knows? I, I would like to, um, to tell something about the project. Uh, it's a recording with original music composed by me. Uh, but the, the central idea was to take the words of some poems and some scraps of novels and also from readings and conferences that uh, th this group of people called the Beat uh, Generation did uh, during the years, the several years of their career. And, but the original part of this work is that uh, when I tried to know these people, and I was completely fascinated about uh, their themes and energy, aura. Uh, I, I listened to their voices and I found them so charismatic, so full of power that I thought that it was uh, very important to bring this voice and to use these voices in my CD. And so I'm trying to, uh, in, to share this scene not only with uh, Alessandro and Michael, but also with Jack Kerouac, Ellen Ginsberg, William Burroughs, Gregory Curso, and Lores Ferlinghetti. Good evening, fellow members of the Beat Generation.
Thank you. I'd like to start this, this journey toward the, the beat generation in this, uh, with this poem written by Allen Ginsberg called 
um, entitled New York Blues. Uh, maybe a squalid place where they lived all together, speed freaks everywhere and stolen things everywhere. But they were happy. They spoke for hours and hours about literature, philosophy, religion, sex, drugs. And they were happy. They, were, they loved a simple uh, life made uh, uh, with beauty coming from books and creative creativity coming for, from the, their typewriter. And so, New York Blues. Uh, for the next um, song, we move. Uh, I didn't wrote the next song. It, it, it's written by a very famous uh, jazz musician, Horace Silver. That's uh, an icon of the bebop period, something like that. And uh, uh, the scene is described by Jack Kerouac this time. And it's uh, in a jazz club. Uh, he, it's taken from a reading uh, San Francisco scene. And uh, it's um, a very, um, it's language in the, in, the, in the reading and of course in the novel. It's a fluid, a simple and spontaneous, as vital as the, the jazz rhythm and the jazz music, okay? So there was a connection between bebop, the, the, the kind of jazz of that period of the 50s, 40s, 50s, and uh, a connection with a mm, way of writing, in particular uh, by Jack Kerouac. He used to say that he would like to be considered a jazz poet who plays a long blues during a Sunday afternoon jam session. Marco. Blowing the blues away, it's the title, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we have something special down here at Birdland this evening. Now it's jazz. Recording the Blue Note Records. Everybody looks everywhere, it's a jazz joint and beat generation mad trick. The place is roaring, all beautiful girls in there, one mad brunette at the bar drunk with her boys. One strange chick I remember from somewhere wearing a simple skirt with pockets, her hands in there, short haircut, slouched, talking to everybody. Up and down the stairs they come, the bartenders are the regular band of Jack and the heavenly drummer who looks up in the sky with blue eyes, with a beard. He's wailing beer caps of bottles and jamming at the cash register and everything is going to the beat. It's the beat generation, it's Bayat, it's the beat to keep, it's the beat of the heart. It's being beat and down in the world like old time lowdown and like an ancient civilization, it's the slave boatman rowing galleys to a beat. Sabadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadad
You see someone, hi, then you look away elsewhere for something someone else, it's all insane, and you look back, you look away around, everything is coming in from everywhere in the sound of the jazz. to ask Michael Rosen to join us because we are doing something very special, playing with you, first of all. <laughs> and Michael Rosen, we are going to play um, a song, um, a music set to a Gregory Corso poem, Gregory Corso's poem called Marriage. Gregory Corso is representing here something very strange marriage, a very strange kind of marriage, okay? Written in a way which nobody and never done, have ever done before, um, about its hypocrisies, contradictions, and absurdity, okay? And at the end of this long, very long and ironic poem, um, I could use only a part of that, uh, he concludes uh, saying, devising ways to break marriages, a scourge of bigamy, a saint of divorce. Maybe never get married. <laughs> never <laughs> ever. Should I get married? Should I be good? Astound the girl next door at my velvet suit and Faustus hood. Don't take her to movies but to cemeteries. Tell her all about werewolf bathtubs and poor clarinets. Then desire her and kiss her at all the preliminaries. And she going just so far, I understand why.
out at the wedding, all her family and her friends, and only in a handful of mine, all scrounging and bearded, just waiting to get up to drink some food. And the priest, he was looking at me as if I masturbated, asking me, do you take this woman for your lawful wedded wife? And I trembled and went to say, say, pie blue. I kissed the bride, all those horny men slapping me on the back. She's all yours, boy, ha ha ha. And in their eyes, you could see some obscene honey. Then all that absurd rice and clanky cans and shoes. Niagara Falls, hordes of us, husbands, wives, flowers, chocolates. All going to do the same thing tonight. The indifferent clerk, he knowing what was going to happen. The lobby zombies, they knowing what. The whistling elevator man, he knowing. The winking bellboy knowing. Everybody knowing. I'd be almost inclined not to do anything. <laughs> ways that break marriages, a scourge of bigamy, a sink of divorce, a sink of divorce. Devising ways that break marriages, a scourge of bigamy, a saint of divorce, a saint of divorce, a saint of divorce, a saint of divorce. Michael Rosa. I wrote some words because many things to say and many necessary things that I don't want to forget. Um, despite their provocative attitude and total reflection of con rejection of conventions, most of the Beat Generation poems are filled with a great sense of mysticism and spirituality. This is the case of the next poem called Holy right by Allen Ginsberg um, that evokes uh, the sacredness which can be found in the simplicity of any existence okay what is sacred it's not transcendent but rather besides everywhere um, Ginsberg 
who has a compelling and charismatic figure, was a very charismatic fi figure um, of the beat generation, had many friends in the pop music, in particular Bob Dylan, and all the scene that in that period started to use the music to spread um, ideas of peace and love, as we know. And so I thought here and in my recording to put also to, to, in, to give my interpretation of a very famous song that maybe is the icon of, the, of this period and of this pacific movement, that's Woodstock written by Johnny Mitchell. Super learning, we are 
stardust We are golden And we've got to get ourselves Back to the garden Back to the garden By the time we got a wood stuck, we were half a million strong, and everywhere there was signs and celebration. And I dream to saw the bombers riding shotgun in the sky, turning to butterflies above our formation. We are stardust, being a little car. We are Back to the garden, back to the garden. Thank you. Okay, next song, it's a requiem. So something written for somebody who died. Uh, when Charlie Parker, the great, famous, splendid uh, jazz bebop saxophonist died suddenly in 55, uh, Gregory Corso, was, um, of course, uh, very impressed by this, um, this dad and um, wanted to celebrate the, this, uh, this great musician. 
writing something very special for me. It was difficult to set music to that, but uh, at the very end, um, I, I thought about a street parade. I thought that somebody is telling, is telling everybody that Charlie Parker is dead. And uh, he, I thought it was uh, uh, something very close to the spirit of the poem. Requiem for Bird, Charlie Parker. Then uh, came a nowhere bird. Yeah, a nowhere bird. While bird was blowing, another bird came. An unreal bird. A nowhere bird with big draggy wings. Bird paid it no mind, just kept on going. And the corn bone came on come. Right, like that's what I heard. The draggy bird landed in front of bird, looked bird straight in the eye. Bird said, cool it. Seems like a bird of the square bird Only for a while The nowhere bird began to fall From the mouth Making all kinds of discords Man, why can make it summer? Bird implored, but the nowhere pip is back and forth. Like an old miser with a nowhere scheme. Yeah. By that time, bird realized the fake had come to goof. Bird was a bird. To split when all of a sudden the nowhere bird ran its spinning head into the barrel of bird's horn. Bugged, bird blew along crazy mad. It was his.
Alessandro Guiz. We need to cut two songs. And so we go straight to On the Road. On the Road, On the Road, written by Jack Kerouac, as you know, and was the manifest of the Beat Generation. And it was uh, written in three weeks, maybe you already know, in a unique uh, uh, roll of, of a paper. And it tells about, uh, um, about this uh, journey, lasted three years, to the Big Sur, so the land that was for the beat uh, generation. And by the way, they didn't want to be called the beat generation. This, it's uh, something that uh, critics and histori historian, historical hmm, historian used to used to uh, uh, used to use uh, to represent that cultural movement. They they started, but they didn't know the power of their poetry, the, the poem uh, of their novels, and but. This, this is the case because it was uh, the journey everybody wanted to do at the time. And maybe something, um, an inner journey, that's something we do when we are young. So, On the Road is written by me using the very last page of the novel and I didn't change anything. And it, it's music, it's real jazz. And so it was uh, very inspiring for me and I'm happy to have the chance to sing it for you. So
to anybody besides the photographs of growing old. I think of Dean Moriarty. I even think of old Dean Moriarty. Please, Michael, come again. Thank you. We are doing maybe the most famous poem uh, entitled How, How, sorry, How, written by Ellen Ginsberg. It was a very famous poem because in the 50s, 55, um, the editor, the publisher, and the translator, Fernanda Pivano, had few problems with justice. They um, had a process. They were sued, they were sued okay. Um, and uh, because, uh, because of the, the obscene things uh, written in the poem, and they, people told that it wasn't possible to spread this kind of poetry um, full of obscene things and, and many other things. But uh, the, it was uh, the, the, the fortune of her poem because they win, won the, the process, the? Well, they didn't win the lawsuit, they lost the lawsuit. Okay, okay, they win, they won, they won. Well, I don't know, I don't know. So they won, and so the poem became immediately very famous and was written by everybody. And uh, in this poem, uh, it's a very strong thing. Watch out, because it's strong. Eh? And um, um, Eileen Ginsberg, um, as the title says, tells, uh, it's a kaleidoscope of apocalyptic images which describe another kind of America, the, the America that nobody ever described uh, till that moment, and it was a uh, alienated, exhausted, confused, compressed, distorted, despair, disparate, and exas exasperate. So it was uh, something very uh, strong that I want to share, and we are doing a very strange trip. Who knows where, but uh, we, we will. Okay, something like that. Okay, yes. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Are you ready? of my generation destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical, naked, dragging themselves through the Negro streets at dawn looking for an angry fix, angel-headed hipsters burning for the ancient heavenly connection to the starry dynamo and the machinery of night. 
poverty and tatters and hollow-eyed and high, sat up, smoking in the supernatural darkness of cold water flats, floating across the tops of cities, contemplating jazz. Who passed through universities with radiant, cool eyes, hallucinating Arkansas and Blake light tragedy among the scholars of war. Expelled from the academies for crazy and publishing obscene odes on the windows of the sky. Cowered and unshaven rooms in underwear, burning their money in waste baskets and listening to the terror through the wall. Who got busted in their pubic beards, returning through Laredo with a belt of marijuana for New York. Who ate the fire in paint hotels or drank turpentine in Paradise Alley. Purgatoried their torsos night after night with dreams, with drugs, with waking nightmares, alcohol, and cock and endless balls. Alessandro Guis, Michael Rosen. Thank you so much. I want to thank you for coming. Thank, thank you so much. I would like to thank uh, uh, Professor and Professor uh, Paolo Prato for inviting us. And it was a great pleasure and a, and a big and a huge honor. Thank you, Paolo. And uh, thanks to these great musicians and to the beat generation that was so inspiring and made possible to share something 
beautiful philosophy. I'm happy to have some jazz in this university, American University. And thank you for coming. Grazie, grazie Elisabetta. Lasciatemi. Let me thank you, uh, Elisabetta, for uh, accepting the invitation. I have followed her work for quite a few years, so I know that I was presenting something outstanding. And uh, thank Elisabetta, thank you, uh, Alessandro, thanks, Michael. Okay, it's been a pleasure. Okay, thanks to all of you for being here.